You really don't know the problem unless you know the whole problem. And the reason why is because then what really do you know about the problem? In order to make a diagnosis, you have to have knowledge. That is what it means. Dia, like diaphragm, like our throats, through way of knowledge. That's what it means to make a diagnosis is to use knowledge as a means for action, which as we do, our minds becomes our actions and our actions become our world. This is very essential to understand. So if we are trying to tackle a problem, what it first relies on is the information that's present. Then we take that information, we assimilate it, we understand it, we critically think, but we're also open to it at the same time, and then we can create an action for ourselves and tackle that problem, that issue, that thing that we're focusing on. So what's the issue here? If you don't know the problem, unless you don't know the whole problem, what am I talking about? I talk about a lot of problems on my channel. I talk about one problem in particular, that is statism, the belief that somebody has the right to rule over you. Now, I always share these five questions. I'm going to share them on the screen for you. If you don't know what statism is, it's the belief, like I said, that somebody has the right to rule over you. What gives somebody that right? Does somebody have more rights than you? Even though we're all created, humankind, we're all the same, are we not? What makes us different? We may have be not equal uh, in our lives, but are we created equal? Are we sharing similar basic natural human functions and look at that natural side of humanity it's a lot more than just looking at one part of it or another part of it because you can point and say the TVs are the problem the smartphones are a problem the cars are a problem but do you realize that they all could be part of the problem do you realize that there's more part of the problem and not just one thing like if I were to target statism and say that this is the problem because it's what creates government it's what maintains it I can say that it is the problem then, but it's not the whole problem because that's a belief system. So it's also a problem on behalf of the mind. It's a problem on behalf of the mental psyche, the health of the body, essentially, the conscience, the morality, the knowledge that somebody has. So statism is not enough. It may be enough to address something, but you still have to explain what that ism is. And you still have to understand what comprises of such an ism. And that requires even more. And so the deeper you go down that rabbit hole, you realize there's more than what meets the eye. There's more than what we say we know. There's always more to understand. The TVs, the smartphones, all those things I mentioned, right? The fast-paced world, the denaturing. These are all forms of the nature, all forms of problems that can be found within our world. Now, people may say, well, what's the problem with cars? Well, maybe you ever think about it. Maybe it's causing some feeling of transportation, like we have to use cars because everybody else use it, uses it. And therefore, we have to have jobs that are miles away. We don't have to have local communities. What? convenience has done for us has actually made us more lazy or made us more dependent on machinery or made us more uh, not interacting with other human beings because we're entrapped in our closed boxes going on our straight line paths on the road and consumed by our technological phones etc do you see that this is a multifaceted problem this is not just one problem this is not just one thing that i'm picking out in a crowd full of problems no if there's one thing that's a problem and it's causing all these other problems you betcha you have to look at that whole situation right i can look at somebody who has a disease and i could get down to the root cause and say this is what needs to be ta tackled but are we going to forget about the symptoms i mean the symptoms are there you, i mean it would help to treat them too would it not I mean, most people, if they're dealing with a headache, even though they know the root cause of it, they may want to treat the root cause, but they probably want to get rid of that headache as well. They probably want to get rid of that pain. They probably want to deal with the symptoms at the same time as the root if they were given the option to. So we can do the same thing with the world. We don't have to just look at statism. We don't have to just look at technology. We don't have to just look at crypto. We don't have to just look at one thing. If you can understand all of them, I think that's a very holistic view on life. Now, can all of us understand everything? No, we can't. But we can try. You can say, well, how much can we try? Isn't that overwhelming? Isn't that too much and, and too much in our world? Is it, though? What do they all share? Maybe find the commonalities. You know, there's a reason why uh, we talk about natural law and the wrongdoings, and we say this is what makes an action wrong. 
We can come up with a list of right doings. We can come up with a list of wrong doings, even though the wrong doings might be even easier than the right doings, uh, because everybody recognizes them generally as wrong. Even then, still, you can look at the commonalities between them, and you can get even more basic, even though now you're covering even more. And this is, again, looking at the micro and the macro, the principle of correspondence, the hermetic principle, where if you look at the peasant, that can actually tell you about the king. If you look at the king, that can tell you about the peasant, how people act above so they act below, or how people act below so they act above. You can see why the world is the way it is, because it's reflective. Now, the same way here, you can look at the basis as to why things are occurring or what is comprising of that bad thing. And you can say, well, yeah, it's the unnaturalness of the world. It's the unhealthiness of the world. It's the immoralness of the world. And even though those aren't even words, you get the point what they're intending to show. And that is the intention of what is happening. So if you see my intention, I'm saying that you need to look more than what meets the eye. Now, a lot of people may say, well, this sounds redundant. Maybe this sounds like common sense. But, again, do you question everything? Because I question everything. And by everything, that means everything. That means I'm willing to make myself look crazy, I'm willing to make myself look like this conspiracy theorist, even though that's a term used to discredit people. I'm willing to talk about anything. I'm willing to say anything. I mean, you know, realizing the power of my words, realizing the power of the knowledge. I realize what I'm doing. I realize what I'm putting out in the world. So I know I can do anything if I'm able to, if I have the knowledge to. It's my choice if I want to. So there's all these things around here, all these things I could perceive. Am I going to perceive it? Am I going to do something about it? Am I going to see how each one of these things affects me? Or am I going to find out later in time when it does affect me? This is the very difference between learning from awareness versus learning from experience. And many times more than not, do people learn from experience first and so they get hurt and i don't want to see people getting hurt so if you want to address the problem and not create more problems it's not just addressing the root it's addressing the whole which includes the root just so much as the symptoms so we're not just zooming in on the pixels of the art to realize that they're pixels we're zooming out and seeing the whole picture of art and realizing yeah that they're pixels but it's also a big art piece so we're realizing every part of the picture. We're not missing anything. That is what it means to really be of the all, to have it all, to have it all figured out. And like I said, can anybody have it truly all figured out? Well, this is the striving that humanity must achieve, and this is what will ultimately evolve humanity for the generations to come, because we live in the age of mass information. It's possible to learn more about anything more than ever, so we can achieve, achieve minds that can perceive more things more than ever. But are we going to get carried away by the fast-paced world? Are we not going to realize what it's doing to us, that we're going so fast-paced, that I'm having to speak so fast, that I'm not breathing as slow as I can, that I'm not speaking as much from the heart as much as I can? These are things that we take presence and simplicity upon to then make observations, and then act. So, do so, and continue to do so. This is just a mere reminder. Thank you very much for watching. Corey and Angelot, Nature is the Answer.